Now, phone is a software download that turns your router into a member of a global family of routers who share Wi-Fi. Basically, there is a global Wi-Fi network. It's just locked. What we do is we unlock the global Wi-Fi network, which already exists in many places. Of course, not in the digital, not in places that, that have been digitally excluded, which is certainly four billion or more people of the planet. But among the people who are digitally included, the Wi-Fi nation exists, but is not such. And that's what we're doing. We're putting it together. Coming to America, I saw that in America, Wi-Fi, there's a little Wi-Fi war going on. You know, there's Wi-Fi is either free or a ripoff. You know, and we try to say, why should it be either free or a ripoff? Why can it be either free or affordable? So we're coming here with a $2 a, a day rate, which makes, if you're a Fonero and you're a donor, you always get Wi-Fi for free. But if you're not a donor, you get it for $2 a day. So we think that Wi-Fi can be free or affordable, and we share a significant part of those $2 with the ISPs. So we are making proposals to ISPs to do this, and we were very well received by ISPs. I cannot disclose exactly who we have seen, but at this time I would say we have contact, we have active contacts with all the major ISPs in the United States, and we are being very well received. If you are Linus, you, you would do it because you want the global roaming, you want to share. If you're a Bill, you do it because you want the money. And if you're an alien, you connect and you, you don't care about how the network is built, you just want the Wi-Fi, you want to use it, you want to pay the $2 and not bother. He has a bar. He sells coffees and he wants to make a little more money. So for those people, but at the same time, he doesn't want to give all, all maybe totally free Wi-Fi because he doesn't want people there to sit all day and consume nothing. So he says, well, at least I get the two dollars from this, you know, a dollar from these people. If I have a little disincentive for you to park your life at my bar, but you know, just like people say, look, if you sit at my table, you better order something, you know. So, but it's something, it's not $12. We don't say never pay and have free bandwidth because that's not true of gasoline and that's not true of you know, many other things in life. We're very different and, and in America right now, we are sort of the third way, okay, of doing this. Um, there's one way, which is lobbying for legislation to ban that, which has been successfully done in a lot of parts of America. There's another way, which is defeating the lobbies and doing that. And there's a third way, which is telco friendly and using friendly, which is the phone way. Because if a city is thinking about going Wi-Fi with phone, we can, the cost of going Wi-Fi with phone is really very low. Let's say the city wants to do this and they say, okay, in all our public places we're going to get routers, you know, at $25 or whatever, we'll sub probably subsidize them to probably we'll give them away in a quantity and they will get it in the libraries, in the, and to me it's reasonable that a city would want to have Wi-Fi in all the public places, the public schools, and that they should provide for it, and that's totally reasonable. What's not reasonable to me is that a city should become a telco operator of some kind or build their own telco company and that sounds to me a little, you know, back somehow I I don't have such confidence in government, you know, to do this. And so I think the city should put Wi Fi in all the public places that belongs to the city, the schools, the hospitals, everything that belongs to the city. But I think the city should collaborate with its citizens to build a network in the fun way. So then you come to Boston and you will, if you're, you, if you're a phone area anywhere in the world, you get free Wi-Fi, and if you aren't, you pay $2. No. Sounds to me like a friendly gesture. It's either free or $2, but the $2 saves the telecom operators. And frankly, I know many people don't like them, as I said this before, but I really think that without them, we wouldn't have the internet, and the idea of building a Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi in a city and destroy a telecom operator because really it's hard to imagine how they're going to make a living if there's free Wi-Fi everywhere. I can't see how that is not eventually going to backfire, going to be 
sort of like a socialist system in which then there would be no improvement and this incentive where only the rich people will get better Wi-Fi and the poor people will get the free Wi-Fi. It just, it, do, it doesn't seem appealing to me. Um, so far, so good in the sense that we're getting so many, uh, such such an incredible number of foreigners compared to what we we said before when we presented the investment to our partners. Um, but I guess what could kill phone is what can kill democracy, which is if people say, ah, oh, I love democracy, but I hate to vote, you know? And, and you say, well, yeah, I love Wi-Fi everywhere, but I, this installing the router, you know, like, or indifference, it's indifference. If, if, if we don't manage to capture the imagination of people, and people just, they're indifferent about this, um, I guess we're not going to succeed. But we think, we've seen tremendous enthusiasm. We think a lot of people wanted to share. They just wanted a safe way to share. They wanted a, a, a way to share that somehow gave them something too. Because now you share, you get free world, global roaming. Um, but we really have to work very hard on all the other elements to make it a success. The meshing, the downloading, the social aspects, the and we have to work on our communication so people, you know, agree to do this.